not restricted by any means to use in the classroom or several places like that. That is a machinery, hardly discernible perhaps, for um, running a colloquial mobile, as it was called. That's uh, the wrong way up, yes. These were large suspended mobiles, and I was taxed with the ability of making a, uh, an exhibition piece uh, for entertainment, in fact, with which people would uh, engage in conversations through. So I made a family of mobiles, um, which were these things, uh, on a mechanically rotatable beam, an environment out of a PDP-8 computer, small one, and what in those days would be equivalent to a microprocessor, a load of junk in each one. Point being that the mobiles had a little life of their own. They chatted to each other by beams of light, which they waggled up and down, and by hooting sounds and so forth. And anybody could go into that discourse if they wanted to and hoot at them or put their hand up in front of the light. And they did. I have a question. Yeah? Uh, and that would be Does the concept of beauty enter your concept of cybernetics? Yes. Because I heard you use the term uh, elegance, yes. and I wonder if you call that word. Yes, uh, beauty it does enter very much into it. I think that, in fact, of coherent theories, we tend to accept and attend to those that strike us as beautiful. This may be for reasons which are quite popularizing the scientific today, as for example, mathematically elegant proofs, or which have an aesthetic harmony about them. And I love it. But it may not be expressed in those terms. My own view of what is beautiful is probably something very global, which doesn't fit particularly well into the popular uh, slang usage. And it isn't, it isn't regarded as very restrictive. And that's because I tend to paint things, draw things, otherwise act in other ways as a scientist. Uh, but I still use those criteria, actually, in judging scientific things. Point being that I think that nearly everybody who is a scientist, mathematician, or what have you, uses aesthetic criteria, whether they call them that or not, in actually finding out what is going to be made consensual and promulgated, and people are going to trouble to find out whether it's going to be coherent or not. And it's only when it becomes coherent, and in that sense is accepted as a beautiful framework or a beautiful picture, that inside the picture you can devise consensually approved testing instruments, microscope meters or whatever, P8 meters, uh, and which assign to some proposition derived from that consensually agreed structure under that conception, uh, you can uh, assign, you know, a very additional truth value to that. And that is entirely a socially agreed function. Now, education, a fortiori, allows us the imagination, the liberty to, to adventure. We're not stuck with necessarily the testing apparatus given. No, we should pay deference to it. We don't need that. This is to be good Gordon, I don't know whether it's a propositional truth or merely, merely a veriditional truth, but someone over here is reminding us that in vino veritas, <laughs> and perhaps those who have questions or comments can uh, corner Dr. Pass after he has a glass of wine in his hand. Oh, very nice. Yeah.